The Commanders and Ravens have been going through joint practices throughout this week. I've got my takeaways from those here coming up here in just a second. And then also Bleacher Report came up with two big moves for the Washington Commanders to make here in 2023. We'll be dis discussing that later on today's show. But before we get into today's action, do me a favor and like today's video if you're excited for Monday Night Football for that matchup between the Washington Commanders and the Baltimore Ravens. We're going to be doing a live watch party, so make sure you click that subscribe button as well, but kick things off right now by clicking that thumbs up icon. Now the good news coming out of joint practices is that the defense is looking absolutely Absolutely fantastic. They were locking up Lamar Jackson, Tyler Huntley, and crew all week long. And there's so many players that are showing out right now. Chase Young, Montez Sweat is looking really good. Jonathan Allen is looking really good as well. However, the bad news coming out of these joint practices is that once again, you know, Washington's offense has been struggling, especially up front on the offensive line. And, you know, I'm looking at this unit right now. And of course, I've been, you guys know how I feel about the offensive line here in Washington right now. I think they need to add another piece in free agency, but it definitely looks like Ron Rivera is having a tough time seeing that right now. And he looks content with the guys that they have. Terry McLaurin's been looking good. Sam Howell delivered a couple of really nice passes this week when he had a clean pocket, but overall the offense did look a bit sluggish against a really impressive Ravens defense. And then we go back to the defensive side of the ball here for my biggest standout during joint practices this week, which has been rookie, first round rookie out of Mississippi State, Emmanuel Forbes. Now Forbes, I've been saying all offseason long, he is a perfect fit for Jack Del Rio's off zone coverage of, of a brand of football here. I, and I think that he really did a great job this week. The reports coming out of training camp was that he was locking up Odell Beckham Jr., Rashad Bateman, Zay Flowers, that crew that they got there in Baltimore. Emmanuel Forbes had no issue locking those guys up. And then, of course, you know, I think the iron sharpens iron effect with Terry McLaurin back at Commander's Camp has definitely helped Emmanuel Forbes adjust to the NFL game to this point in his career. And I think when week one comes around, this guy is going to be ready uh, to really give himself a real shot at the defensive rookie of the year in 2023. And then also another note that I will point out is that there was a ton of fights during these during these joint practices. You know, usually these joint practices, they get super chippy. Uh, you know, there's there's contact after the whistle. People take offense to that. They, they, they start pushing and then all of a sudden you got a brawl on your hands. And you know, some people like this. Some people don't like this as much. You know, some people think it's a, it's a sign of an undisciplined football team. It's, it, it shows that you have a lack of mental toughness, all these different things. But then some people like it because it shows that you're willing to stand up for your teammates. It shows that you're a really cohesive unit and you guys are going to go to battle for each other. So let me know what you guys think about fighting at training camp. Do you like it or dislike it? Let me know down there in the comments. Give me an L if you like this fighting type attitude or type D if you dislike it. This is going to be the pinned comment on today's show. So YouTube's going to throw you an ad break here in just a couple of seconds. Take advantage of that time by giving me an L or D down there in the comments. All right, now let's get into the Bleacher Report rumor section of today's show. We'll start off with the player that they think that they need to sign here heading into the 2023 season, and they connected Kareem Hunt, saying that the Washington Commanders are, is, are the perfect fit for Kareem Hunt heading into the 2023 season. Now, is that true? I would say that, you know, if I was Kareem Hunt, Washington is a, def is, a, is a really attractive option. Eric Bieniemy is the offensive coordinator here. They have a nice little relationship there. The one year that Kareem Hunt uh, led the league in rushing back there with the Kansas City Chiefs, Eric Bieniemy was the offensive coordinator. And, you know, he's somebody that definitely had a down year last year with the Cleveland Browns. That's one of the reasons why he is still available in NFL free agency, despite the fact that both Ezekiel Elliott and Dalvin Cook signed contracts this week with the Patriots and Jets respectively, but Hunt is still one of those top guys, those big marquee names still available, and Bleach Report thinks the Commanders are the right fit 
for him. Now, I wouldn't mind signing Kareem to this roster. You know, it'd be a nice addition. He does bring a little bit of uh, dynam a dynamic element to this rushing game that you're kind of missing right now. You know, you got Brian Robinson Jr., who's more of your grinded out type of, of solid starter that's going to be really good for you in those short area situations. He's going to be really good on the goal line this year. And, you know, I really do like Brian Robinson Jr. I think he's a really tough, smart player. No problems with him. But he doesn't really have that whole home run hitting ability that Kareem Hunt did have throughout his career here over the over the last several years. And Antonio Gibson has that dynamic element to his game, but he's not quite as tough and smart as Brian Robinson Jr. So, you know, it would make sense if Washington would bring in Kareem Hunt, especially for the right price, but I'm not going to be giving up too much for Kareem Hunt. I'm not giving him anything more than $3 million on a one-year contract, and even then, I would rather go and get an offensive lineman per Personally, because that's a bigger need for the commander's roster right now than running back, at least in my opinion. Now, coming up here, uh, they also they also think that the commanders should trade away a starting player that I really do disagree with. Going to be revealing who that is here in just a second. But first, check out our friends at Fanatics, where they have an awesome commander's t-shirt combo for you guys on their website. You can help support the channel and restock on your commander's gear right now by going to chatsports.com com slash commanders combo that's our link that uh, that lets fanatic fanatics know that we sent you so really do appreciate all the support if you need some more commanders gear this is the place that you go get it chatsports.com slash commanders combo so bleacher report says that the commanders should trade chase young before the 2023 season now i'm going to tell you why i disagree with this heavily in just a second but first let's see what the author of this article matt holder from bleach report had to say the washington commanders are about to be in a tough spot this offseason both of their edge rushers montez sweat and chase young are set to have their rookie contracts expire and it's going to be very difficult financially to sign both to long-term deals that being said Picking who to pay between the two should be an easy decision. Sweat. He's been healthy, relatively speaking, and productive every year while Young shined as a rookie and, sh and has struggled to stay on the field ever since. And he completes his little article here by saying, if the commanders are being realistic with themselves heading into the regular season, they know they're not going to be competing for a playoff spot. So it makes sense to get something for the 2020 Defensive Rookie of the Year while they still can. Now here's the thing, Matt. I think th I think pretty much everything that you just said was wrong. You are correct that right now they're they're in a little bit of a predicament with Chase Young and Montez Sweat, both being free agents for the 2024 season. But you know, I look at what's going on right now. Chase Young has been absolutely fantastic during this preseason process, during the offseason process. He's really impressed everybody. And right now, I think that there's a legitimate chance that he could be the guy that the commanders end up paying because according to the reports, he is absolutely dominating at commander's training camp. He once again dominated against the Ravens offense this week in joint practices. And to say that they should trade this man before the start of the season when Ron Rivera's job is on the line and he likely needs to make the playoffs in order to save his job. This guy's like, oh, well, if they're, if, if, if they're, if they're honest with themselves, they would just pretty much just tank the season and trade away Chase Young while you still can. That is an absolutely absinthe statement from this man, in my opinion, dude. Like, they, like, this team is obviously attempting to make the playoffs this year because if they don't make the playoffs, everybody's getting fired. So why would they just throw in the towel? That is one of the most... This is just a sign of somebody that doesn't know the team, that doesn't know the situation, and he's just going out there saying, oh yeah, if they're honest with themselves, they're just going to throw in the towel and trade Chase Young for no reason. This makes absolutely no sense, and there is no way I am trading Chase Young away here before the start of the season. Now, if the commanders aren't doing all that well, Chase Young had, you know, the production isn't really there in the beginning of the season, and we're at the trade deadline, and someone offers me a first or second round pick for him, then we can talk 
talk about it, but before the season, when you're really trying to make the playoffs, when you're really trying to see what you have in Chase Young, who's finally healthy, that's finally been working with a top end uh, uh, edge rusher, pass rush coach, you know, he looked fantastic in that first preseason game. To trade him now would be absolutely one of the worst moves that Ron Rivera has made in his tenure here with the Washington Commanders. Now, let me know uh, what you guys think about this down in the comments section. If you think that this Bleacher Report article was super dumb, if you think this, tape, this take on Chase Young is absolutely asinine like I do, go in the comments section and spam FBR down there in the comments section for me. That'll be it for today's show, guys. Make sure you click that subscribe button because we have our live watch party on Monday. I want to see you there. We're going to be kicking it with your fellow Commanders fans here on the channel for the entire game. We're going to have play-by-play -play analysis. We're going to have instant live reactions to the events of the game. We're going to have instant analysis of Sam Howell as well. And we're going to have a great time here live on, com on the Commanders Report. So if you want to join our family today and you want to, have, uh, you want to get access to our extensive Commanders content throughout the 2023 season, you're going to want to click that subscribe button right now.